It was a reaction I had never received before. It was 2005. And after traveling to some of the most greatest ruins from the greatest societies the world has ever seen, like the pyramids, the Colosseum, the Acropolis, and Angkor Wat, I had started working for nonprofit groups who were developing ways to help people in very difficult uh, scenarios. They were living amongst societies with very challenging past histories, the killing fields in Cambodia, Agent Orange in Vietnam, the Civil War in Angola, child soldiers in northern Uganda, mass graves in southern Uganda, and the 10th anniversary of the genocide in Rwanda. As you can imagine, these are not easy things to, di to discuss, to talk about in general, but to live in the people's lives who were inviting me into those scenes left me just amazed at how strong they were, despite the landscape they lived in, almost empowered by the challenges in some way. I, re back, I returned back to California after uh, this incredible time of four years of self-doubt, of wondering what was I doing with this camera when these people were challenged daily with this this past that they had lived in. The California ocean air was perfect. It was crisp. The waves were beautiful. But I was doubting myself. I was wondering, what's my purpose here? Like, I'm in school, but like, what, what am I really doing? And the weight of the images I had seen, which I didn't really want to share today because I wouldn't have been able to give them the respect that they deserve, but maybe another time. Those images were in my brain every time I closed my eyes. The people who trust me with their lives were in my brain every time I closed my eyes. And I sat there on my beautiful 1962 Chevy blue pickup. And then the Detroit Free Press called and invited me out to a city I knew nothing about. I didn't know who lived here. I didn't know what the landscape looked like. I knew nothing besides maybe they had made cars once. Within five days, I arrived in a landscape. And the landscape of any city or country or environment you go is the first thing you interact with. It's the first greeting card. To me, the landscape here was more abandoned buildings than I had ever seen in my entire life, yet I had kind of seen these different scenarios and environments around the world that kind of resembled societies that had moved out in some regard or respect. And so it was the landscape that wel welcomed me in one way. And in one way, it actually comforted me. I felt inside as a human very, uh, you know, here, but also empty. I don't know, it was a very interesting thing. I, I still am trying to process it, to be honest. And then I began living in some headline moments working for the Detroit Free Press. Moments that uh, were very interesting because I was witnessing a, a car society that had lived at its height maybe a few decades before I had arrived, right? And then down the street a week later, a self-defense class that I had heard about that had nothing to do with headlines. But I arrived and I was the only person with a camera there and witnessed children learning to defend themselves against gun violence. And I said, wow, how, this is a, this is, these are two narratives here that are, that are just here. I'm an observer, I'm an outside observer. This is interesting. And that week, with these two different images and that history of very difficult stuff. I know you might not have been expecting to hear that kind of thing, but it was inside of me and it, it drove me into the city in a way that started creating 200 to 500 images a day in 2006, seven, eight, nine, each year changing a little bit of my perspective based on who I was working for, newspapers, then being super broke, $9,000 a year making, but still working for some of the biggest newspapers in the world. But each year telling people, now I live in Detroit, and them, them saying, ugh, why? 
they step back. Like the actual narrative, when I first told people I was moving to Detroit, this might not be very popular right now, but there was a time, I don't know if anybody else has received this, I've talked to a couple people who have, but there was the narrative that they believed of the city in 2005 that actually caused them to step backwards. I was like, do you know anybody there? No. Do you know any of the stories there? No. But the narratives they had heard from headline news, I'm not saying news is bad, I'm just saying in general, what they were believing caused them to step backwards. And every time I heard why, even when I was saying I lived in Detroit from California to New York, it just drove me more and more into this city. There were days where I didn't eat because I had no money. But I knew that someplace along the way I'd be fed. And as I got to know the people, my emptiness became uh, rooted, I think, rooted into this city in a way that I had never been moving to other places around the world. I had began understanding parts of myself, parts of the city, parts of all these other things, and building this library. I mean, think about 200 to 500 images a day in 2005 and six. If you were here in 2005 and six, you would understand it's a very different city today. The momentum in 2019, right before COVID, was insane. It was crazy, it was so fast. I had just made a movie with uh, Dan Gilbert for Anthem of Us with Big Sean. It felt super powerful. It was a self-reflection of understanding. I helped uh, Detroit bid for the Amazon project, which I'm kind of thankful we didn't win. Uh, you know, the, the, the ideas there each year was like 10 years in a different city. There was just so much things happening. That, that beautiful strength from 2005 to 2010 that I witnessed, 200 to 500 images a day every day created this archive, people living in the streets, doing amazing things, beautiful things, that I would not have been able to see if I had never moved here. I think we uh, jumped ahead a little bit. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and that archive now is 1.6 million images. It dawned on me at the birth of my daughter that this collective group of images kind of chronological a shift in the city's narrative from, ugh, why, to I heard something was happening there, to voted best city to visit in the world by the New York Times in 10 years, right? And so this archive, I spent 1,000 hours during quarantine editing into a narrative arc, distilling life to its symphony, each note being important. Not saying we're coming back, not saying we're the worst city, not saying anything, just putting it together. No matter how many times I sit in front of this archive and distinguish which notes need to be there and don't, kind of get this point across that something's happened here. Uh, I go back to this understanding of the headlines versus being there just because I cared. My family, I, knew, I know so much about my family's history because of my granny who cared to start interviewing people when she was 10 in 1929. And she interviewed people that were born in the 1950s who knew people that were born in the early whatevers. So my family has signed the Declaration of Independence. We have walked with Martin Luther King in Selma. We have fought in the North in the Civil War. And we have poured concrete at the first ever River Rouge plant. I would not know my own connection to the city if it wasn't for my granny who actually cared enough to document. And no matter how many times I see this archive, I have to understand, I, 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 I can't help but think, what are the other images out there? People doing the same thing I'm doing, but in a pair, the, this prism of perspectives. And so with my own archive, I really want to actually take it into a book because I want to be responsible to the content that I feel I've been responsible with my calling to make. And so there's a book and a coffee table, and everything I've photographed, I've filmed. 
So I have thousands and thousands of hours of all these different beautiful things. And so I think a feature documentary film. But what I think is most exciting and interesting is being able to get this into a website where people can add their own voice in some regard. And I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, and also being able to be, uh, bring this, these photographs into a, a large outdoor exhibit uh, in Roosevelt Park when it first opens and walk people through 2005 to, th to 2022 and hear voices from the images like Bill Harris, like, you know, just, I mean, everybody. I, I feel like I photographed almost everybody from the Kresge Foundation's 125 artist fellows to, to the to Quinder Cut opening, you know, groundskeeper. And I want to hear, I want people to hear those voices in a way that's interesting. Um, and I, the outdoor exhibit I want to take around the world. Um, and I think that one thing that has to be just in my own life I'm understanding is that no matter how many times I look at this narrative, I am still just a white dude from California looking at a mostly black city. I think that conversation kind of needs to take shape in different ways with my friend Lauren Hood and my other friend Eric Thomas and just people coming together to say, this archive exists, but, what, but who else are telling the stories here? And how do we get those into the best and biggest spotlights in the world? Um, please forgive me. when I think about the headlines that we were fighting for years, that I felt like I was fighting against, the worst city in America. Yeah, but I was there when, when the DeQuinter Cut was opened, the worst city in America. Yes, but I was there when Grace Lee Boggs was laboring over the words to help her people in front of her, her inquisitive visitors, looking for one word of advice. Yeah, yeah, but it's the worst city in America. No, I was there when Gilda Snowden was melting wax. When Bill Harris was speaking about the Detroit Way. Yeah, yeah, but it's bankrupt. Shh. I was there when my three daughters were born on Jefferson Avenue. On purpose, in Detroit. The best city to visit in the world, yes. I was there when Jessica Kerr Moore wrote the final two words of one of her poems used in my film. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you.